Good morning. It's great to be with you this morning. And we're going to open the Word of God together. And hopefully, maybe you can grab a cup of coffee and um, we'll share together. This week, we started a series in the book of Acts. And we looked at the introduction and the opening of the book of Acts. And, and this coming Sunday, we'll be looking at chapter 2 and, and the Pentecost and, and all that happened there. But I want to zero in on one particular thing that we talked about this past Sunday and expand that a little bit. And that is that, that Christ gave the power that the disciples needed and that we need for the task that he left us to do, the, the mission, as it were, the great commission that Jesus left all of us to be involved in. And as we think about that, of course, we, we know that that's the Spirit of God coming to live in us. And part of what, what Jesus said in, in Acts 1.8 is, you will receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And then he says, you will be my witnesses, et cetera, et cetera. So I want to talk about this spirit power for a little bit. We're, we'll see more of that and how it manifests in chapter 2. But I think it's important for us to remember what Jesus said the Spirit of God would do for us. And... We read a couple of passages of Scripture. We didn't have a whole lot of time to, to dwell on those, so we're going to do that for a few minutes this morning. I mean, when Jesus promised the Spirit, he, he called him the Helper. And that word in the, in the original language means one called alongside to help. Uh, it gives the idea of helping to carry a burden, helping to lift a load. And... The Spirit of God is in our lives, and, and that's another significant key thing that was changing in this whole thing, is that the Spirit of God would no longer be a force outside of us, working on us and, and working to affect the things around us, which He still does and still can do, of course. But the Spirit of God would be in us for the very first time. And Jesus promised that for the disciples. And we looked at a couple of passages in John 14 where um, he said, when I send the, the Spirit, he's going to empower you and he's going to be the Spirit of truth. He will dwell in you and will, you know, that that's a that's a stunning statement for him to make to these disciples. Here Jesus had been with them and had been all around them and they had watched him and they had been involved in the ministry and, and seen the miraculous things that he had done. But to actually have the Spirit of God living in them was something very different. And they were about to experience what that meant on, on Pentecost, but Jesus' explanation in John 13, 14, and 15, and you really could go into 16 and 17 as well in John, his explanation was that the Spirit of God would come and, and he would bring truth. He would guide them in the truth. So he would give them power for, for several things. And I, I want to talk about this because this same power is available to us as his children today and those who carry out his will and are involved in doing his mission on this earth. And, you know, this idea of the Spirit of God empowering us for service, I think that's a, that's a powerful thing that... You know, serving God at the best of times um, can be difficult. It, it can be something that is um, hard for us in our own strength. And yet, God can give us a supernatural power, an ability that is 
um, not from within ourselves. There have been so many times in my life where I have felt the hand of God and the and the God's power through the Spirit of God at work in me um, when I was too weak or or unwell or just didn't know what to do. And God's Spirit came and, and helped to carry me along. And so that power for service is really important. But then he said, you're gonna have you're gonna have power for teaching. And what does that look like? Well, it it relates to the whole idea of how we take the word of God and teach it and give out what God has given to us. And Jesus said, the Spirit is there to guide you into all truth. And this is one of the main areas that I've experienced in my life as, as I've done hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of, of talks from the Word of God, both in small groups and in church groups and a few times in, in large groups. Um, but it's really amazing how God's Spirit is there to, to guide you, to open up the Scripture to you, and to allow you to speak the truth that, uh, of the gospel and the truth about Jesus um, in a way that is clear and understandable. And, and that's, that's my prayer all the time when I, when I open my mouth to speak, t- to teach the Word of God is, Spirit of God, give me clarity Give me an understanding first for my for myself what the Word of God is saying, but then give me the ability to be able to clearly speak what the Scripture is saying. And I'll never forget many years ago in some training that I was doing around preaching, um, this man said, you know, he said, remember that you have you will have all kinds of people in your audience, young, middle-aged, old, and all of them will have a certain level of the ability to understand. And he said, you need to make sure you keep things at a place where everyone can get what you're saying. And often that is, I believe, a result of the Spirit of God opening things up in a way that can help us to really understand the word, but also to deliver it and to to give it out in a way that is clear and that people get the message of the gospel. These these apostles that were about to embark on this incredible mission to spread the the message of Christ, the, the good news of Jesus around the world, were very green. They were very... Um, inexperienced in in doing this ministry. They weren't trained orators or, as, as I said on Sunday, they hadn't gone to Bible college or, or seminary. They had been in a practical training course with the Lord Jesus himself and listening to the master teacher as he taught the truth of the Word of God and and. He was the living word. And so listening to him speak and listening to how he, he put together those sermons and messages and, and lessons that he taught was a great education for them. But <clears throat> Jesus was going away and he was not going to be there to, to help them and critique them and, and give them what they, they needed as as they embarked on this journey. And so the Spirit of God was there for that purpose, to guide them into all truth, but also to bring back to their remembrance, it says, the things that Jesus had taught. And what a what a great thing that is. And and I know my memory is sometimes really, really not great. And yet I can give you multiple illustrations and examples of when the 
Spirit of God brought to my mind passages of Scripture that were relevant for the very thing that I needed right at that time. And I don't have, as some people do, photographic memory or anything like that. And so having that help by the Spirit of God, really a, an amazing thing um, in my life and in the ministry that I've been able to have. So power for service, power for teaching. And then there's one more that I want to talk about. And this is found in chapter 15, verses 26 and 27. Listen to what it says. This is John 15. But when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. And you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. Bear witness, give testimony, tell people what we have seen and experienced for ourselves. That's what that bear witness actually means. And the Spirit of God is going to empower us to make a priority of Jesus. And later on in this, in this same passage, he said, the Spirit will not speak about himself, but he will only speak about me. And he will give you the things that I have given him to tell you. And that's a really important thing for us to remember that the Spirit of God was not given to us for and I think you'll know what I mean when I say this, not for party tricks or, or things that we can say, oh, look, the Spirit of God has, has done this. But he was given so that the Son of God, Jesus, could be lifted up and the gospel of Jesus could be preached. And I think too often if we <clears throat> miss that priority in our lives, when we're gonna, then we're going to miss exactly what Jesus intended the Spirit of God to do when he was given. And so the priority of the ministry of God's Spirit, we are empowered in order to, to present the gospel and to give it in a way that people can understand it and turn to Christ. And, and we're going to see as we go through the book of Acts how often that happened within uh, the ministry of the apostles and, and the disciples as they spread the Word of God. But let's not forget, when we read the book of Acts, we have to remember that this was something that was the beginning of what God was going to do as He built His church throughout history. And we are a part of that. We're a part of seeing God build His church as we go about what God has given us to do in the area where, where we live and where we minister. So be encouraged because we are empowered by the Spirit of God living in us and ministering through us. Power for service, power for, for teaching and understanding the Word, and power for lifting up the name of Christ and putting a priority on Him. And that's, that's incredible to know that we have that and that we can minister in light of that. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of the Spirit of God. Thank you that he is our helper, caught along beside us to help carry the load and to lift us up when we, when we need him. And thank you that we can serve in the power of the Spirit and teach in the power of the Spirit and, and focus on you. We, can, we truly can be gospel-focused and Christ-focused in our lives because the Spirit of God will enable us to do that. Thank you again for the, the Word of God. Thank you that we can open it together this morning. Bless and guide us as we go about our day now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for tuning in this morning, and I trust you'll be with us on Sunday morning as we open the Word again in Acts chapter 2 and look at the, the amazing events of the day of Pentecost. God bless.